Hey everyone, Keegan with Dark Arrow. I'm holding up the shock bottom brackets, which I just finished machining out on the Tormach. These are for the main gear suspension system on the Dark Arrow 1, and they're used to attach the air shocks to the trailing links. And I wanna walk you guys through how I machine these from start to finish. We're gonna go through quickly all the uh, setups for it. And then at the end of the video, I thought it would be fun to talk through what the cost to machine a component like this actually looks like and some of the variables involved um, for that. But first let's get to the machining and then let's talk about the cost. All right, let's get into it. I've got the stock loaded up in the machine right now. I'm about ready to hit go. This is gonna be the first machining operation and there's gonna be a series of other machining operations that's gonna remove the material from this to get it to this final state. So let's get this thing going. Okay, so we're setting up for op two. This is what the part looks like after op one. You can see how we have it profiled. It's kind of starting to take shape. So we're just gonna flip this over and we're gonna replicate what we did down here um, on this side now. So we're gonna end up with uh, an even closer representation of what we're going for. And then from there, we're gonna put it in the vise like this and machine this half. So we're kind of hitting it from four different sides. So we got the top side, the back side, the left, or the, yeah, and then the, the right. Inboard and outboard, I guess yeah. let's call it. We are um, continuing to pocket out the main hole on this unit. So this is just the drilling operation. And then we're going to come in and do some material cleaning with our uh, roughing end mill. What operation is this? We're on op three right now, so there's only one op left after this, and I'm going to make a pair of soft jaws for that final operation. We have a nice hole all the way through and we'll use that hole to pick up our offsets when we flip this thing over and machine out the remainder of the material. So, time to move on to the remaining tool paths for this spot. So what do we got left here? Uh, we just have one operation left. And that's flipping this over and I have to make a pair of soft jaws for that. So we're going to leave it for, for later. <laughs> okay. This is our part and this is the geometry we're going for that you can see on this first half of it. On the back half, we got to clean up all of this. So we made a set of soft jaws here to do that and the way they work is this is going to drop down in here like this and then this one comes in this jaw comes in and clamps against our fixed jaw and we're going to take our x and y zeros off the center bore and that's going to establish our zero point for the part and allow us to machine this out so one of the challenges with this part is making sure you get the bore aligned from the first half of machining. So when you flip this, you're gonna do a second half of machining. So you want this to be uh, cylindrical from one half to the other. So picking up your offsets from your previous operation is key. You don't wanna pick your offset up off of the soft jaw itself. So kind of think about that when designing these soft jaws themselves. Parts are all finished up. They're looking pretty good. Again, we machine these out in four operations on the Tormach, but that's not the only way to do it. Now let's take a look at the cost. In fact, we've got this pulled up on the computer over here. I'm gonna hand it off to Riley. Cost is something we get asked about a lot when it comes to little machine components like this. I'm sure you're all wondering. So I'll let Riley take over and we'll jump right in. Hey guys, Riley here. As Keegan mentioned, we've already obtained quotes on these parts from a vendor if we were to outsource this. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to walk you through it. 
I'm going to use some quoting tools from Zometry to show the cost of CNC machining these parts. Zometry is one of a few prototyping companies we do business with on parts that are outside of our capability. We've used them a few times for 3D printed parts and lathe components. And they allow you to upload a CAD file of your part and then they'll give you an instant quote on it. And what's cool is that you can adjust different manufacturing variables and see how it will impact the cost of your part. Let's talk through these variables and see how they impact the cost of our shock bottom brackets. Uh, I've uploaded a CAD file for our part and you can see it over here on the left. And over on the right, you can immediately see the cost to make this part and the variables that affect the cost. Uh, let's keep an eye on these numbers and you can see how they change as we change the different manufacturing variables. The first variable, which isn't exactly listed, but it's really important, is the size and geometry of the part. This is going to drive the number of setups as well as the machining time and the amount of material required. Beyond that, the variables listed over here on the right are the lead time and location of manufacturing. Basically, is it domestic or international? The quantity, the material type, the finish on the part, whether there are tapped holes or inserts, the tolerances on your dimensions, the surface roughness, any part markings, and inspection criteria. I won't go over all these, but I will touch on the big ones that are specific to our shock bottom brackets. Okay, we'll take it from the top. I have all the variables initially set to mimic what we did on our prototype parts. We made two of them and they were machined from 7075 T6 aluminum and they have a few dimensions that were machined to pretty tight tolerances. For standard lead time in a US based machine shop, we're looking at just over 650 bucks for these two parts. This is a pretty decent amount of money for two little parts, which is why we normally machine all our prototype parts in house. When we machine our parts in-house, it's mostly just the cost of material we're looking at. And for the two small aluminum billets to make these parts, it costs us less than 10 bucks. Uh, but let's say we wanted to outsource this and do a production run of parts. I'll up my quantity to 100 pieces, which would be 50 aircraft worth. We do have more pre-orders than this at this point, but this tool only will give you auto-generated quotes for up to 100 pieces. So we'll run with that for this video. You can see the cost per unit drops to around $40 a piece, which is pretty significant improvement. Uh, it's nearly an order of magnitude less cost per part. And the reason for this is that there's some effort that goes into coming up with machining strategy, generating tool paths, creating fixturing like soft jaws or pallets, and then this all gets baked into the cost of the job, whether you're making one part or a million parts. So if you're making just one part, this setup cost is a significant portion of the total cost. And this is the reason that CNC machining is considered to be expensive by many because it is expensive if you're only making one part. But if you get into any sort of volumes though, uh, the setup cost per part drops dramatically. Let's look at a few other variables though. Uh, we'll pretend this is a part on the SR71 and we're gonna make it out of titanium so it's really strong at high temperatures. You can see if we change the material to grade five titanium, the cost triples. This is because titanium is just a more expensive material and um, it's more difficult to machine. There's just a lot more involved in machining titanium. Okay, we'll jump back to aluminum. We'll save the titanium for the Dark Arrow 2. I'll touch on the finish since it does apply to this part. Uh, we wanna add a clear anodized finish to our part for corrosion protection. You can see that adds a few dollars per part when our batch size is 100 parts. I'll turn this option off again since uh, we're just focusing on machining costs. Now this part doesn't have any threads or tapped holes, but we'll pretend it does. Let's just give it two tapped holes. Okay, not too big of a deal, maybe a 10% increase in cost. The last variable that I'll touch on here is the dimensional tolerances. Tolerances are to tell the machinist how close to the dimensions on the print the final part has to actually be. CNC machining isn't really perfect. There are all sorts of little sources of error like your tool deflection, machine accuracy and repeatability, machine rigidity, and your tool wear. And then these all feed into the tolerances that you can achieve in your final part. Uh, in simple terms, the tighter of tolerances you're trying to achieve, the higher your cost is gonna be. We do have a couple dimensions on our part that need to be tight tolerances like the bore which has some bearings press fit into it, as well as these bolt holes, which is where the shock attaches. Uh, the width of these ears is also important, as well as how parallel they are. 
Because we have these sorts of critical dimensions, it means that even if we were to pick a different process like welding this part or casting it, you would still need to perform some sort of localized machining operation to hit the right dimensions in these critical areas. So there isn't really an advantage to trying to make this part some other way. I have these critical dimensions set to plus or minus one thousandth of an inch. That's not exactly the tolerances we're using, but it's good enough for demonstrating the concept. Just for reference, a piece of paper is about three to four thousandths of an inch thick. Let's say we could get away with looser tolerances though, and we'll open this up to plus or minus five thousandths. Uh, you can see the cost per part drops pretty significantly here by about 40%. The takeaway here is that if you want to be efficient with your cost, you want to try to minimize the number of features that need to be machined to tight tolerances. There are some other variables that affect costs here like the surface roughness and inspection criteria, but I'll save those for another time. If you want to learn more about this, definitely go upload a few of your own CAD files and play with these variables to see more of what drives the cost of a CNC machined part. We spend a lot of time playing around here when we are designing parts in order to get an understanding of where the cost might land in production. All right, that's a quick look of what it costs to make a CNC machine part. I hope you learned something. If you want to see more of this type of content or other progress videos on the Dark Arrow 1, uh, be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.